Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's very doubtful that anybody who is accused of witchcraft during the witch trials were actually witches. But now we have people who actually do practice witchcraft in all its different forms. Living in Salem. My career for almost 20 years now has been explaining to people that witches don't worship the devil. And now I also work for the Satanic Temple and I have to explain to people the Satanic Temple doesn't worship the devil either. Anytime I see witches on TV, I end up getting mad because it's not True. We're here to help people. We're not here to hurt people. I am in Salem, Massachusetts, the witch city. I grew up here. I grew up in Beverly, which is right next door, right over the bridge. And I can remember being a little girl coming to Salem, going into the witch stores, going to the witch museum, being so fascinated and enthralled in the history of this town. So today I'm going to be meeting with Salem's finest witches. And not only are they witches, they are Satanists. <laughs> I am somebody who believes that you should be able to believe whatever the hell you want as long as you don't harm anyone. And that's the big question mark around today's video because I don't know these people. I don't know what they believe as Satanists and what that means. I just believe there's always more to the stereotype. There's always more to the surface level. I want to get to know the humans behind this. Before my day with the witches, I thought it was important to learn more about the witch trials in Salem's history. So I met up with historian Isabella Connor at the place where it all began. So we are right now in modern day Danvers, but back in 1692, this area was known as Salem Village. And a lot of the prominent events from the witch trials that you'll read about or learn about actually happened here in Salem Village. So we are at the Salem Village Parsonage. It's also known as the Samuel Paris Archaeological Site. And this is the home where Samuel Paris and his family lived, including Abigail Williams, his niece, and Betty Paris, who are the first afflicted girls of the Salem Witch Trials who were exhibiting these very strange, peculiar symptoms that nobody really knew what was wrong with them. Betty Paris's father, Samuel Paris, is the minister of Salem Village. He has his other minister friends come to check out the girls and see what's wrong with them. Nobody really knows what's wrong with them, so of course, the theory they come up with right away is it's witchcraft and they are being um, tormented by the devil. This is really where the witch trials started and this is where those girls ended up accusing the first victims of the witch trials. It's a strange energy in here, literally where the witch trials started in this structure. It's just so weird when you're standing here and you're thinking about all these stories that you read about and it's like, this is where it happened. It's just crazy. I went to meet up with local Salem witches, Thomas and Pixie, who are also a part of the Satanic Temple. I had a lot of questions for them that I hope to get answered throughout the day. What do you so have good. in your jar there? Oh, this is just water with mint leaves. Oh, okay. Ooh, look at yeah. that. I thought it was That's a spell. So I want to learn some spells. But I can show you some of the things I work with. I would love to learn. Okay, here's something witchy right here, right now. This old nail. This might not look like something to you, but to me, this is something I can use in a spell. I'm gonna pick this thing up. But iron nails can be used in protection spells, binding spells. They're kind of powerful. Fun fact of the day, from the rusty nail on the floor. I love this house. Yeah, it it's smells very messy so right good. now. Yeah, come right on in. This is cauliflower. Cauliflower. The little Collie. She loves people. Hey, honey. She doesn't like me. She ran right away. So what do we have going on here? There's a lot of different things in here. This is a love potion I made a few years ago. This Datura. Datura is a moon flower, so it's a type of flower that blooms at night. So it's always been seen as really magical and associated with the goddess. It's a poisonous flower, so it has associations with poisonous magic. It's a closed seed pod and the seeds are in there so I can plant them if I want somewhere, I'm saving it. A witch is basically anybody that does magic or ritual. Today, the biggest mis 
misconception of witchcraft is that it's the practice of evil magic or that it's to harm other people. People look at witchcraft through the lens of their own religion and they see it as an opposing thing rather than what it actually is. There is different types of witchcraft, there's different types of Satanism. Our beliefs align with the Satanic Temple, which is a non-theistic atheist organization. So I am a witch and then I also have atheist beliefs as well. Oh, cookies! Why are there cookies here? It's not for eating at you all. You didn't leave those as an offering? I did! They're an offering because like spirit, the dead like spirit, you leave either like alcohol, water, cookies, some money, just for like respect. In reference. This is also where I, I leave offerings for my cat. I had a black cat named Broccoli. His favorite food is broccoli. So I leave broccoli in here. His ashes? <laughs> His skull. Wait, really? Yeah, I have a friend who does taxidermy stuff. They give the body to um, to beetles, oh. and the beetles eat off all the stuff. And look at those oh teeth. Oh my god. Isn't that the cutest little teeth ever? Ever since I started working and living uh, in Salem as an adult, broccoli was always there with me. And his favorite food is broccoli. Now I have cauliflower. <laughs> Thomas and Pixie said it was important to note that witchcraft and their involvement in the Satanic Temple are two separate things. So after showing me around their home, we decided to sit down and talk a bit more in depth. Here we are. Uh, here we are. So how did you two meet? He was doing tours and I was booking the tours and then we did a show where like a love spell was done for a member of the Pussycat Dolls. You were doing a love spell for, for a member of the Pussycat Dolls. Yes, on TV for like MTV or something. We were we were just like being cute. Yeah, we meet all kinds of random celebrities uh, in the tourist industry. It's some people I can't even mention because I have to sign like NDAs. the NDAs for. I did a love spell with Katy Perry. What? Yeah. Or so maybe love. we can do a love spell for me. I'm more interested in money. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the whole worshiping Satan thing. <laughs> <laughs> My job as a tour guide is often to really oversimplify things and to really dumb things down. So I've gotten pretty good at it. Dumb when it, it down for me, just dumb it on down. <laughs> <laughs> with the Satanic Temple, I say, it's one of those religions that has no supernatural stuff, no gods, no masters. It's science, it's logic-based, it's philosophy-based, and Satan is a symbol, not a dude. So Satan represents rebellion. In the Satanic Temple, you're not worshiping the devil, but you are worshiping Satan as a symbol? Not worshiping Satan as a symbol. The Satanic Temple, and doesn't actually worship Satan. Uh, they see it more like an influence or a symbol um, to get influence from. So the core moral drive of Satanism is sticking it to the man, fighting the oppressor, fighting for the oppressed. And that's really the most important thing in Satanism above all else. Do you see witches in Salem doing magic that is evil? The most evil type of witchcraft is the witchcraft that feeds off of others. And you do see that in the tourist industry. There are people who take advantage of people. I think the, the big problem with modern witchcraft is that in new age witchcraft, it's often used more as self-help than as a spiritual or religious path. I've had people come into witchcraft shops and say, what crystals are going to help the cysts on my ovaries, girlfriend? a Dr. Crystal. So that's where you guys like, are like, okay, we vibe with this yeah. satanic temple because it's about like, science. First. One of the biggest misconceptions of witches is that you could be cursed by somebody who doesn't like you or says that they cursed you. And that's not the case. I don't want anybody to feel like one person, no matter how powerful they feel, have them control your life in any sort of way. In the afternoon, we went to meet up with Thomas and Pixie's friend, Sarah, who was also a witch, but not a member of the Satanic Temple. So I came out as being a witch in the seventh grade. 
And at that point I was in Catholic school and that didn't go over very well. So I got sent to God camp. I was pretty much brainwashed while I was there. And when I originally moved here to Salem, I was still kind of in that mindset. I came here and it was almost like that bubble burst. And I realized just like all the stuff that I had been fed was literally crap. <laughs> and when I got here, I was like, wait a minute, the way I felt before is the way that's right. And it's the way that resonates with my soul. And it's not a bad thing at all to be who you are. What did you resonate with when it comes to witchcraft? Why in seventh grade did you feel really drawn to it? So I've always been able to kind of like experience spirits that have passed on from a very young age. Back when I was um, in Catholic school, I'd like bring this up and I'd be like, hey, so you know, this is something I experienced. And they were like, you know, it's the devil. And of course you tell a child that and that's like the scariest thing they could possibly hear. When you were going to God camp, what was that experience like? It was pretty crazy. I tried really hard to just be unapologetic about like, hey, this is how I feel. Cause I've always been like really upfront and honest and kind of my own person. And I was like, no, this is like how it really is. Witches don't worship the devil. Witches are all about nature and this and that. But the way that they, they just like beat it into you. It's hard to kind of combat adults coming at you. What they say is logic and they really, really believe it. But I understand where those people were coming from because they really believed that they were helping me. You can't judge people based upon what they specifically specifically feel what they specifically believe because that's their life journey. You have to encourage them and help them along their path without passing judgment. So Salem is a place that no matter who you are, where you come from, or what you believe, you're always welcome here. And that's something that's really important about the city. You know, in 1692, there was hatred and greed, but it's done a complete 180 from there so that it's become a religious center for people who aren't safe to practice openly around the world. It's really interesting to see the sort of kinship that modern people feel with these people who were accused back then. Even if they really weren't witches, you can form this like connection where you kind of relate and you feel for them and now it's it's such an inclusive city I mean you have people of all different backgrounds ethnicities faiths you have modern witchcraft practitioners it's sort of become this like wonderful haven for all different people. People are afraid of witches for many different reasons. It all comes down to ignorance at the end of the day, but also I blame Hollywood. I blame Hollywood for a lot of it. It's all propaganda. Every movie I see with a witch in it, they kill someone or they hurt someone or they curse someone. And it continues to propagate people being afraid of witches. We should be educating people and doing the opposite because we're here to help people. We're not here to hurt people. You know, we believe in something called the rule of three which means that any spell or any energy we send out into the world, we believe returns to us threefold or three times, three times, three times, or 27 times. So if you think about the stakes being that high, you always want to send out really good energy into the world so you're going to get some real good energy back versus bad energy, which you don't want at all, let alone 27 times as bad as you might have sent it out. After hanging out around town for a bit, we headed back to Thomas and Pixies so I could get a taste of some real spell work. When you say that you wanted help with money or career, like, w was there something more specific, like? Just feeling more supported financially to do what I'm doing and growth for my YouTube channel. Growth for YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the millennial spell, right? <laughs> right. <got> you covered. <laughs> <laughs> you just start selling, selling it to that actually, sell these ritual kids, sell the YouTubers. <laughs> now that you said that, the moment this airs, there's going to be 400 kids doing that just so you watch. What we want to do is a simple um, spell for you for success and career. So before we fill the bottle, each one of us is going to take a little bit of time to put some stuff in it. I'm going to cleanse it. So um, I can cleanse this in the name of the goddess and the god. If we're doing success, money, there are specific things that you'd want to use, and I actually found this, and it's a blend of basil, bergamot, rosemary oil, peppermint oil. These all just happen to be things that you'd find in a, a money spell. These are all things that are good for help with money. Someone else want to put more things in now? Everybody does their spells a little differently. I kind of like to do mine by nose. Um, I kind of like smell what smells right. And I feel like this smell goes so that. well with that. I absolutely love these, the peppercorns in all the different colors. 
I feel like they're just like a really beautiful addition. Why are peppercorns used in this kind of a spell? There are a few different reasons. So I don't know historically if you know much about the spice trade and stuff like that. I mm -hmm. kind of like to think about like what our ancestors would have considered as sacred and would have considered to be, you know, very valuable. And pepper and tea is something that like people murdered each other over for years and years. Something like this is like a sign of prosperity. It's a sign of, you know, having that wealth. Oh wow, that smells incredible together. Mmm, that smells so good. Some rosemary. Do I just take a pinch? Yep, and take a pinch, and as you put it in, remember our ancestors, remember the future that you want. I always do things in threes, so if you mm. want to take three little pinches and put them in. And uh, Catherine, you want to uh, charge it up? Pixie had me write my intention on a scrap of paper and put it into the potion bottle. You're gonna hold it over that little funny thing. Okay. And then you're gonna say, I, your first and last name. I, Skylar Cowens. Bless this potion bottle. Bless this potion bottle. And draw into it. And draw into it. The sun-kissed orange light. The sun-kissed orange light. Of the planet Mercury. Of the planet Mercury. May my career. May my career. Grow. Grow. And flourish. And flourish. With this talisman. With this talisman. Being the catalyst. Being the catalyst. And as this is my word, and as this is my word, this shall be done. This shall be done. So mote it be. So mote it be. There we go, sister. Do you know what so mote it be means in reverse? Yeah. And it is done. Yeah. So when we do a spell, the easiest way to explain it is imagine you have a broken arm. You don't want to imagine your arm getting better. You want to imagine your arm better. Right. When we say and it is done, we imagine that the act is done. Okay. So when I say so mote it be, you answer back kind of like hallelujah, amen. So, yeah. so mode it be. Amen, no baby. <laughs> so mode it be. So mode it be. So mode it be. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Jesus oh Christ! <laughs> yes! <laughs> that was so exciting. Yay! Thank you, Tom's thank you. Good. What a day, what a day! Yeah. This is so fun. You guys are awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much for like letting me into your world and for just showing me like your life. I honestly was like kind of nervous coming into this. I feel like I learned so much. You guys are like really, really nice and awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, this yeah. has been so fun. We are about teaching and that's like a huge part of who we are. And that's why it's like, it's our pleasure to be here, to be able to be here with you in this space and even just be able to say like, okay, like let's send more of that positivity out there so even more people can kind of see it. Should we do a little peace prayer for the world or something? No. <laughs> Tom will never hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Not hold hands. He's not a You're not chilling with some LA witches right now. <laughs> So no world peace prayer, oh, yeah, but... <laughs> so I want you to imagine, as you hold that, that this is the flame, like you're the, the damn uh, Statue of Liberty. <laughs> this, is the, this is truth. Yes. What's important is to send out truth. Truth. Regardless of all else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Truth. Truth. So mode it be. Mm -hmm. So mode so it, it be. be. Going into this experience, I'll admit that I definitely had some fears about being around Satanists and witches who I didn't know. But after spending time with Thomas, Pixie, and Sarah Frankie, I ended up learning so much and really getting to know the human beings in front of me. I realized I had no reason to be afraid of them and my fears were only coming from the fear of the unknown. This experience was an incredible reminder to release judgment of others and if you take the time to get to know someone, you might be surprised by what you learn.